right, so today we're going to look at one of the released math SOL tests. When I go to test nav, and you can just Google it, test nav, you're going to click on Virginia, and then this will appear. Only on the test day will you actually have a username and password to enter, and that's what the student will get on their test ticket. But to practice, we're going to go down here to Virginia practice items. And here are all the different grades. I'm going to keep it on math, and I'm going to go to non-audio math test. Students who are English language learners, or if they have a special ed accommodation, will perhaps have the audio, but other students will not. So we're just going to do the non-audio version right now. All right, so the thing that's really important to know about the math test is that once students go to the next question, um, they're not gonna be able to go back and change anything. So um, also it's really important to read the directions. And if there, you see something important in the directions, you can also highlight it. So let's see, directions, drag the answers to the correct boxes, label the place value position for the digits three and zero in this number. And here's the number we're looking at. I'm gonna highlight that to make it stand out. The place value position for the digit three is, okay, that's the 10 thousandths place. So I'm gonna click and drag this over. The place value position for the digit zero is hundreds. Okay, I'm gonna make sure I did the right thing. The three is in the 10 thousands and the zero is in the hundreds. All right, I'm confident in my answer. So I'm gonna click the next arrow to go back, to go to the next question. Now this type of question is a little different. It says, type your answer in the box. How is 705,003 written in standard form? I would try to write this on my scratch paper first. I'm also gonna think about what standard form means. What does standard form mean? I know that standard form means the regular way we write numbers. So it's just gonna be numbers or digits. Um, so 705 looks like this. I'm gonna put a comma where I see the word thousand. 705,003. Wait, that doesn't look right. Hmm. There we go. 705,003. All right, I'm confident in my answer, so I'm going to click Next. Um, right now, it because this is just practice, the back arrow is activated and I can go back. But on the real test, you will not be able to do that. Only the right arrow will be activated. Okay, so what is 3,359 rounded to the nearest thousand? This is important. I'm going to highlight this. Hmm. Well, my hundreds place can help me decide. It's less than five, so I know I'm going to round down. I think 3,000 is the best answer. Which number sentence will make this statement true? Okay. Um, for this one, I'm going to practice using the answer eliminator tool. So I just click up here. And I know that my number has to be bigger than 8,243. So I'm going to look at every single one. And if I see that it's smaller, I'm going to eliminate it. Okay, that one I know is smaller because it has a one in the hundreds place. Now I'm going to look at the tens place. This number has a four. I need a number bigger than four in the tens place. No, two is less than four. Three is less than four. Eight is greater than four. This is the only answer. So here's the thing. If I click on it, uh-oh, I can't do that. So when I want to choose my answer, I need to go back to the pointer tool. And that will help me choose my answer. Okay. I'm going to click next. For this question, it's really important that you read the directions. Okay. For this question, it's really important that you read the directions. So it says divide the figure into the correct number of equal parts using fewer or more, then select each part that should be shaded. 
So we're basically doing a digital model of a fraction. Complete the fraction model to show seven eighths shaded. Right now I see halves. So I'm gonna click more until I get to eights. Eight equal pieces. Right now I have five equal pieces, six, seven, eight. I'm gonna to count to make sure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If I accidentally do too much, right, I can go back. All right, seven eighths shaded. I'm just gonna click on it to shade them. Doesn't matter which seven. Okay, four, five, six, seven. There you go. So eight total pieces, seven are shaded. Let's keep going. All right, for this one, select each part that should be shaded. This picture is shaded to represent one whole. And now I need to shade this picture to represent the number three and four sixths. This is a mixed number. Think about what the three stands for. Yeah, the three stands for three holes. So I'm going to shade three holes first. If I accidentally do too much, when I click on it again, it will disappear. All right, so there's three holes. And then my last fraction is four sixths. Students might wonder, why is there an extra one that's blank? Well, um, the people who made the test don't want it to be too obvious um, what the answer is. And so that's kind of their, if you need it, but you might not. And they don't want to make the answer too obvious. So I'm not going to do anything to that last one. I know I don't need it. I have three holes and I have four six shaded. I'm going to go to the next one. All right, select the correct answers. Choose the two models that each appear to be exactly one fourth shaded. Two models. Okay, this is important. I need two answers. If I only pick one answer, I'm gonna get the question wrong. I need two answers. So I'm looking for one fourth shaded. Hmm, well here's, this has way too many shaded. That has four shaded. This has one shaded, but it looks like halves. That looks like one half. Mm. This looks like one third. This one definitely looks like one fourth. And this one looks kind of weird, but I know I need two answers, so I think it's probably right. What I might do is use my straight edge to look at it a different way. Hmm. So I'm thinking that if I were to move this little piece over here, it would look a little bit more like one fourth. So I'm going to make sure I select that too. Notice when I click on it, the outline gets much bolder and darker. So that's how I know I've selected it. See how it gets thicker? All right. So those are my two choices. I'm going to hit next. For this one, I need to scroll down all the way or it's not going to make sense. Okay, so if you're ever confused and you can't figure it out, what's going on, make sure you've looked at the whole part of the problem. It says drag the model to the box. The model may be used more than one time. This model is shaded to represent a fraction, one third. Place, but here's what I actually need to do. Okay, place the correct number of models to show a value of one and two thirds and each of these pieces is one third. So we're gonna count by unit fraction until we get to one and two thirds. Ready? One third, two thirds, three thirds. So that's one whole, one and one third, one and two thirds. That one's kind of tricky, but that's how you do it. All right, these are hard um, because you have to consider every single one and there might be, sometimes there's more than one right answer. Let's see what it says. Which correctly compares the fractions represented by the shaded regions of each circle? So basically, which is true? Three fourths equals three eighths. 
looking at the shaded part, this looks like a lot more of the fraction is shaded. So I don't think those are equal. Looks like my, oh, the answer eliminator would work down here. So set A, I'm going to eliminate. Set B, th two thirds equals eight twelfths. Hmm. These kind of look like the same part is shaded, but it's a little tricky because I picture it as like a little Pac-Man, if you know what that is. Um, he's kind of facing to the left and now he's facing to the right. So it's a little hard to tell. So I'm going to say maybe B, maybe. Let's look at C. Three six is greater than two thirds. Well, three six is equal to half, one half. And I don't think one half is greater than two thirds. So I'm going to eliminate set C. I can also do that if I want. Okay, set D, eight twelfths is greater than five six. Hmm. Oh, I know I can double six to get 12. Or if you wanted to kind of cut each piece in half, that would give us 12. Okay, so I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This is actually equal to 10 12. Eight twelfths is not greater than ten twelfths. So I can eliminate set D. All right, so that means set B must be correct. Good job, let's keep going. Okay, for a problem like this, I'm definitely gonna be solving on my paper. Even if you had use of the pen tool, it's just too hard to do it on the computer. So please use your paper and pencil to solve this. I would also use the highlighter to highlight any important information. Quinn had 354 rings in his store. He sold 138 of the rings. Sounds like subtraction. Then he bought 96 more rings. What is the total number of rings he has in his store? Okay, so this is a two-step problem. This is how much he started with. We need to subtract 138, and then we need to add 96. Take a minute and try to solve this, and then we'll see what the right answer is. All right, so when I subtracted 138, I got 216. And then when I added 96, I got 312. Did you get it right? There was some regrouping there for both problems. So you definitely need to be able to regroup to solve this correctly. Unless you use a number line or something else like that, I suppose. All right, let's keep going. Select the play button to play the model. This model shows a multiplication fact. Okay, I really like this model because it's showing us, instead of using arrows, it's we can definitely see which direction we're going on the number line. If we're going towards the bigger numbers, if we're going forwards, in other words, um, that means we're either adding or multiplying. Okay, remember, multiplication is just repeated addition. So I think it's multiplication because I'm jumping the same amount each time. I can count the spaces or I can look at where I land. I'm landing at 5, 10, 15, 20. So it looks like I'm counting by fives. I see, hmm, well, take a minute and you think, what, what do you think the best answer is? Four times four, four times 20, four times five, or five times 20? I see four jumps and each jump is five. 
So I think the best answer is four times five. Sometimes it's also helpful to think about why something would not be the right answer. Like five times 20, if I were to solve that, five times 20 is 100. My number line stops at 20. So that really doesn't make sense. Four times 20 is 80. That is also not even on my number line. That's way to the right. And four times four is 16. So if that were the problem, it would end at 16. All right, now we have a number, another number line. We can see the arrows are pointing forward. This number line, I see two jumps of three. So it might be two times three. I don't see that option. So I'm thinking three times two is my best answer. Drag the answers to the correct boxes. Create an equation related to 27 divided by nine equals three. And it says 27 equals three something something. This always confuses kids because the answer comes first. Okay, but think about your number balance. As long, our goal is just to make both sides equal. So even though we normally have our answer on the right, we don't have to. 27 equals something over here. Our job is to make this side also equal 27. Okay? And it also needs to be a related fact to this one. So the numbers I see are 27, 9, and 3. So I think I'm going to use a 9. And in the middle, I need my operation. The opposite of division is multiplication. So let's take a minute and see, is this true? 3 times 9 equals 27. Yeah, it's true. 